Uh, hello, this is team 1231B with our robot fall robot explanation. Uh, this robot, it performed pretty well at our competition a few days ago. Uh, we made it to semis. It worked pretty well. Uh, nothing really broke except in semis. We'll get to that in a bit. So let's get started with the drivetrain. Uh, we have a drivetrain, it's 450 on 3.25 inch wheels. Uh, it worked really well, we had great acceleration throughout the match. Not a lot of friction, motors only got warm like one time after a match. So we swapped them out. Uh, we have screws in here, standoffs, lock nuts, didn't really fall apart, worked well. Uh, the only time something got a little bad was, I think it was this screw, got a little loose, so if you were to build a drivetrain like this, find a way to like get things tighter, or use a thread locker if you have one. Uh, not a lot of friction to keep friction down when you're making a drivetrain like this. You don't want to make it too tight. So what we did is you make sure it can like, you can move it back and forth like a millimeter, or like spin this spacer here, because if you have it tight enough, when this lock nut is too tight, then it'll cause a lot of friction and then you'll drift. And that's not good. Uh, so, worked really well, performed well. Uh, weighs nothing because we zip tied our bearing flats. I think last time I weighed this bot, it was only like 13 pounds. So, that's really good. Uh, so,. Drivetrain worked well, didn't really get pushed around a lot. 66 watts and double stacked motors in the middle so we have space in the back. Uh, next up we have our goal clamp. Instead of having a standard goal clamp where it just like goes down the middle, uh, we decided to have ours have two gripping points before our competition because our goal started flapping around a lot, couldn't get good grip on it. We would always lose it in like scrims and stuff. So we, with our goal clamp, uh, decided to make it two points, one here and one here where it gripped it. It made it really difficult to drive in driver, but when we got the golden auto, it, we never really had a goal get bumped out or anything and consistent angling to the point where we could score it well. So just, and we have these here to line it up with, uh, to make it get the right angle so it doesn't angle too much. Same with uh, this back here, so that way when it angles, it can only go to a certain angle. And grabs it, works pretty well. Alrighty, so next up, uh, we have our intake. Our intake is just a standard hook intake, flex wheels up here. Uh, we would like to have our chain be further in the middle later, but uh, right, we started late, so we're only to make, able to make something out here. Uh, if you were to build something like this, try and not have your chain on the outside. There was one time it got snapped, but it was at the end of the match, so still did well. Uh, another thing when building a hook intake like this, you want to make sure you have a gear, because if you don't, then this will be spinning out and you'll lose your ring, and then this will be spinning in, and you'll be picking up rings, and doesn't go well. Uh, another thing you may notice with our uh, intake is how we don't have one type of flex wheel. Uh, at the start of the season, we tried it with all 1.625s. That didn't work that well. Then we tried it later with 2 inches. It, Flex wheels, that still didn't work that well. So what we noticed worked the best with the amount of flex wheels we had was to make kind of like a U-shape. So that way it would grab the ring because the ring isn't a flat object. It's a curved object. So when we tr you try intaking it with a curved object, we're able to grip it on a lot more points of the ring, thus pr allowing our intake to intake it a lot quicker and it worked a lot better. So let's see if I can get this working while filming at the same time. Uh, 
here we go. And then it squirted on the ring. Uh, a little difficult to intake on a slippery surface, but otherwise uh, worked pretty well. Lastly, we have our wall stake mech. Uh, it's just a lady brown mech. Worked pretty decently. Uh, we had some, we originally just had all this nonstick padding right here, just all the way across, but that didn't work that well. So we added, like, during the lunch break, we added a lot of rubber bands right here, one right here. It's a little sketch because it wobbles a bit, but uh, we ran out of time. In the future, we're probably going to add a triangle bracing, like, from here to here. So that's probably going to work well. Another thing we had with our wall stake mech is uh, this aligner right here. Makes it a lot easier if you haven't been able to have that much driving practice to score it. Because we can just hit it like anywhere in an area this big and we'll get aligned pretty well. Another bit of poly polycarb we have is this for our intake. It's like similar to the thing you would use for redirect. It can go up really easily and for this we just use it to apply a passive like a little bit of pressure so I, if it hits the if it hits this it won't fly out because having rings fly out of your robot isn't that good our wall stake mech is just one to six or one to five sorry my bad uh 12 to 60 with a red motor bit too much torque we were trying to get just a tier one hang with it uh, before the comp but we weren't able to get that so but it still works well it can squirt pretty well uh, works well grabs the rings if you were to build something like this in the future uh, have it be try and put the motors on the inside if you have the motors on the outside it's just a little more sketch and more sketch is less good. Lastly, uh, the rubber band right here. We added it around lunchtime when this wasn't working as well as we hoped it would and as it was doing before. So it just applies a bit of tension here so we can get a bit of a better lock. Uh, I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck to all teams this season. Have a good day.